Yeah, so good evening, everyone. Welcome to this session. And it's it's with a lot of pleasure and a lot of joy that I actually welcome Rochelle to this session. Rochelle has been a good friend for a while now. And it's always fun talking to her, exchanging views on writing. And, uh, yeah, to tell you a bit about Rochelle. Rochelle is an alumna of Iowa's International Writing Program and a Charles Walls Writers Fellow at University of Sterling in 2017. She's the author of Four Degrees of Separation and Paper Asylum, shortlisted for the Rabindranath Tagore Literary Prize in 2020. A poetry film skirt showcased on Shonda Rhimes' Shona Land. Her poems To Taraja won the 2018 Norton Geralt Literary Prize in the UK. As a critic, her reviews have appeared in Basafari, Sahitya Academy's Indian Literature, Asian Shah, and Chandra Bhaga. Her reading, her poetry has been read in a lot of countries, including India, Bali, Iowa, Macau, Sterling, Glasgow, Hong Kong, Ukraine, Hungary, and Bangladesh, and even the Gold Coast. So uh, we, I just want to add here, Rochelle also leads a poetry workshop for us where she teaches the haiku, haibun, and the free verse, and it is being held next weekend. So welcome, Rochelle. Thank you. Thank you so much, Namrata. So nice to be here. Yeah, so uh, Rochelle, uh, just to give you a little yeah. background about this group, uh, this FDC is actually based on the lines of NaNoWriMo. So everyone mm -hmm. who's here is aiming to complete the first draft of whatever they are working on. It could be a poetry collection, okay. a short story collection, or a novel in this month of mm -hmm. November. So all of them mm -hmm. are writers. Some might be in the second round of editing or some might be in the final round of editing, but in short, they're trying to write daily, regularly, and fall into okay. a practice. It's more of a community Wonderful. group. And mm -hmm. after this, they'll definitely aim at getting published. So we are looking at a lot of feedback and tips from you on writing and publishing in this conversation. Definitely. I'll try my best to collate everything yeah. that I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. So the first question is, uh, writer, poet, and a translator. Your journey as a writer has been very interesting. Can you tell us a bit about your publishing journey? Yeah, OK. So from the, uh, from the poetry, short story, and the translation perspective, uh, you, you know, and I'm talking of publishing as well, because, you know, we're talking of creation plus public publication right. and especially for this group. So uh, you could singly publish your poems or your short stories that in itself is a journey in itself. OK, and uh, then when you have a collection of short stories or uh, poetry or haibun, that becomes another journey because there you need publishers of a different kind. OK, so uh, in the first instance, you needed journals and magazines anthologies or prizes and in the second you needed uh, either the big five publishers if they are ready to uh, you know look at uh, your manuscript or then the independent publishers the smaller publishers there are so many of them right so basically the journey is of two and what i noticed in poetry especially for those who are coming up with collections of poetry is that uh, even if you have 50 percent of your manuscript in journals and magazines or have won prizes 50 percent of that it's considered good because it means that you, your your work has circulated. People know about you already. So what it means subtly is that uh, there will be more readers. Mm -hmm. Okay, rather than you being a rank new poet, you may be a very good poet, but no one has heard of you when you have this uh, this collection out. So yeah. it would take some time to you know for somebody to review it or um, say something about it. So it's best if you, few of your poems are in some journal you know some some everywhere like basically 50 percent so i'm thinking that's a very good uh, very good uh, ratio now 50 percent of the manuscript right that's a very yeah, good ratio yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so you have an interesting journey as a writer too where you started writing while you were still in the corporate world and then decided to plunge into it full time so what are your thoughts about the qualifications of a writer you know this debate that we constantly have at least in with uh, you know context to the indian publishing is you know a writer who should have an MFA or should not have an MFA, and does it actually impact your public your chances of getting published or being chosen by a publisher? What are mm -hmm. your thoughts on that, and what has been your experience on this? Yeah, so I think I think this is an eternal debate, and this will you know continue forever, and it's a good debate actually because the real debate is about whether you can be a self learner or you need gurus to have an organized learning. I'm thinking at thinking of it as that way. Uh, so I believe in both, but I'll tell you, uh, when I came to writing, I was a self-learner. So even if you just have the hunger and the thirst to learn, okay, that's enough. Uh, and that can actually offset any MFA program, because what do people do in MFA programs also? They are stoking your hunger, right, to learn. 
they're giving you assignments, but only it's in an organized fashion. Here it is, uh, self-learning happens in any chaotic way. It's like the chaos theory, right? You can learn from here and there and everywhere. So there's a lot of fun in self-learning. The only thing is the journey is longer. Okay, like I took long to learn uh, the short story form. Mm -hmm. I took long to learn uh, or rather a lot of mistakes and stumbling to learn line breaks and free verse, even free verse, which is supposed to be just free, you know. Yeah. It's not like that. It's like it has a rhythm. It has a line break. It has so many things. It has an uh, it has a relationship to the space on the page. So when you do self learning, you take a longer time because uh, no one is there to tell you or guide you as a mentor to quickly tell you. You may have beta uh, beta critique groups, which might be your kind of peer mentors. Maybe yeah. that will work. But then all of you are in the same boat. You don't have a bigger mentor. So uh, you take longer to learn, but I think if you have enough of uh, hunger and thirst every single day to last you, you don't need an MFA program. Now you need MFA programs or organized learning only if you are a late bloomer or you are in a, you're in a hurry or you're very clueless. You know, you tried self-learning, but you feel inadequate. You feel, no, I need a mentor. I need a guide. Then you, you should definitely try to go for them and they are expensive, most of them. Uh, but then I think, no one ever came back saying that they regretted doing an MFA. Right. Okay, but the, the challenges are the same. Okay, you you know, I feel you go to the moon also, you have to come back to the earth. So you have to come back to your page, your uh, research material, your themes. You have to work with your plots and stories. No one is going to do the writing, rewriting, editing for you. No one is going to do the evolution and the growth your relationship with your art with you. They are going to give you the best tools, but eventually mm -hmm. you would have to come back to earth and do your own work. Um, and um, uh, so only sometimes I feel uh, in an MFA program, people get dwarfed with the, uh, with, you know, the giants, the literary giants that are there. Yeah. Sometimes you come across so much of uh, good work that you feel dwarfed. So it could also be that sometimes it can go, but I don't feel that, uh, I mean, that backfiring is like very, I've not heard much about it. Somebody said, yeah, I stopped writing because uh, I thought, what can I write? You know, there are the giants here. So I felt that was the only uh, sad kind of um, effect. But generally, no one really regrets an MFA program. But I feel if you have self-learning, you don't need. You don't need. You need self-learning and also enterprise. I'll tell you this. Um, there was a student who recently, uh, from one of my workshops, who recently uh, went to Glasgow. She's now at the University of Glasgow. And... Uh, uh, she said, she's still saying, okay, I need your help. And I said, what now? You've already reached, you know, somewhere. Yeah. So she was like, no, I need, I need uh, some guidance of how to get into these journals, how to go about it. So this brought me to the second thing is that even if you go to MFA programs or you, you may go to residencies, international residencies, you still need a lot of enterprise to know how to figure your way even there. Yeah, like it's not over. Even mm -hmm. you go to the moon, you have to manage craters. <laughs> Yeah. it's not over anywhere yeah true yeah. definitely true yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Rochelle I believe you've recently got your literary agent to represent your works uh, how was mm -hmm. the whole experience both before and after finding a literary agent and how did you go about it mm -hmm. yeah so I think uh, literary agents are not easy to come about and I say that only because of the forms I write in when I write in poetry forms or haibun uh, first of all, very few people know what a haibun is. Only I think Red River Press is uh, publishing haibun yeah. like by the dozens. Yeah. So uh, and uh, Paper Asylum was published, uh, which was a book of haibun was published by Copper Coin. So people are now opening up to publishing yeah. haibun, which is very, a very book. Book. Yeah. Yes. Now she has a book by a big five publisher. So yeah. it's like now we are seeing something beautiful mm. in this subculture. But first, mm. people didn't know about uh, you know. Uh, they didn't think that Haibun was even legit. People thought, what is this? Some Puritans thought, what is this prose poetry form? I say, ho nahi sakta. Hey, you know, like, uh, so they were like, it, can't, it can be prose or poetry. How can it be both? But now all these things are, uh, you know, settling because now it's becoming a very publishable medium. Uh, and uh, I feel that uh, because of its hybridity, it's going to stay because you have mm -hmm. this story, you have the poetry. So this form is going to stay. Uh, uh, what was your question? <laughs> I was talking about the literary agents, your journey to yeah, yeah, yeah. finding them agents, before yeah. and after and your so, experience. Uh, so, yeah, so as a poet and a, and a uh, short story writer and a haibunia, it was a little difficult to find an agent because they all wanted novels because novels is business. Okay, so 
I understand that very well. Yes, definitely. So it was a little difficult because whenever I asked some of the agents, they would be like, "Give us a novel, na ho jayega. Give us a novel." I'm like, "But what if I want to write high bun? What if I want to write poetry? You know?" So there is also this uh, whole um, debate of your creative, uh, com- your creative instincts, na compulsion. Yes. What you want to write? You don't want to be led by the market. You probably want to lead the market. You don't want to be led all the time. So. Uh, it was difficult getting an agent finally i found one who was ready to look at uh, see poetry uh, book makers looks at sohel mathur but uh, more even the short story he's supportive of that it's difficult to place poetry so sometimes i feel uh, you are your own agent if you are doing forms that are not very uh, out there mm-hmm. you know then you are your own agent and it's also fun being your own agent because you are learning how to agent agent it how to represent yourself you know yeah. self rep <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's there, that's there. But uh, I, so I, I did get an agent, and uh, book bakers placed me with uh, Vishwa Karma because even short stories is not a form that all mm-hmm. the time. Okay, all the time. There are big publishers who publish short stories, but it, if you are within a certain theme, you know, and it mm-hmm. matches their list, then they do it. It's, so it's not all the time. Hit, hits and misses. So um, seriously, yeah, it's a little bit of a lottery, a little bit of a landmine, a little bit of a labyrinth. and uh, you're finding your way so i think there's much luck with novels but i didn't want to be forced to write a novel i'm writing one now but mm-hmm. organic yeah so uh, has your approach like do you feel that uh, now publishing seems easier having an agent now that you have an agent than what it was what when you were you know self represented your work in the market yeah, yeah yeah definitely definitely because now you don't have to build that one railroad Yeah, okay yeah. it's already there you can just uh, you know send your manuscript to the agent and say uh, tell me what you think evaluate this and tell me where it goes so that definitely is solved however uh, what i noticed is whether you are going to be big five published or independent public pub, you know publisher published you still have to uh, market your book right you still have to uh, do all that so even if your big publisher has contacts let's say at a festival they'll give yeah. you a slot okay because they all have that cloud yeah. or they will give you a bigger distribution mm. than a smaller publisher it still doesn't mean that you can sit and say chalo ab ho gaya because you have to sell that many copies to be you know in that list because now as a, if you are a, uh, you know published by a big publisher what i noticed is that you are you are against celebrity best sellers yeah. you are against a big pool so you also have to prove that you you, you know you're worthy of that worthy i'm saying in quote and quote of that big publisher thing so it puts stress on everybody so everyone is a bit stressed with the marketing their work it's not a, that you can sit easy even with a big publisher you have to see that a certain sales happens so and especially if you're a new new debutant you know a big publisher published so this so you I would like oh my god it's not even mm-hmm. relaxing there <laughs> Okay. This you would say, irrespective of genres, you write in poetry, be it short story or be it a novel. You would say that the pressure is there in terms of all the three types of writing. Or would you say that novel, because it's a more commercially acceptable category of yeah. uh, writing, it is slightly yeah. lesser in that? No, see, it depends on if it's a small publisher and they come up with say two hundred copies print run, then you you don't have that much because I think two hundred yeah. copies will get absorbed. Okay. True. Yeah. you can blackmail your people to buy them <laughs> just kidding but uh, say if you have a print run of 1000 copies somewhere at the back of your mind you know na the, that inventory has to move maybe 6 months one year okay and i think the worst fear uh, an author would be if the publisher says uh, this has not sold can be pulp it the worst you know? thing yeah. and i don't think this is pulp fiction okay yeah this is not pulp <laughs> is like yeah. i Imagine thinking a book is going to get pulped at some time. You know, it's like not a good, a good thing. So you would like that inventory to move. So you would have to make your infrastructure. Nevertheless, your big published, small published. I think so. It's only the matter of distribution. Then you know, you get a bigger distribution map with a bigger publisher. Uh, like and see that you have to be there then at that bookshop. You know. Yeah. See that you're there. Uh, you know, at least having one book event. So you also have to plan that infra at the back. and somewhere the this pressure also impacts the next title also yeah. the next thing that you that want to come and uh, but but see when i say pressure means i didn't find much pressure in poetry but i think there might be a bit of pressure in novels in the sense 3000 copies are supposed to be the best seller 3000 copies only 
yeah but um, i i do think that there's a bit more pressure in, in the novel sales yeah i think it all depends on the print run I, you you should try to get the least print run <laughs> that's a good way of looking at it <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 anything to reduce your pressure yeah true <laughs> Uh, moving on, Rashad. So you were an alumna of Iowa's International Writing Program in 2015, and a Charles Walls Writers Fellow at the University of Sterling in 2017. And you were also at the UVA Creative Writing India chapter. So please tell us how all these experiences helped you shape your writing, and also how should a writer aim to participate in such scholarships? What should they expect when they are aiming for such recognition? Mm-hmm. So first and foremost, you were there with me, Namrata, yeah. in the UAE, Kolkata. Yeah. So we share this experience of sitting on this, uh, you know, large table yeah. and uh, sharing our works, getting it critiqued, you know. And it was a beautiful experience because I think uh, beta reading groups you do get, of course, critique, but sitting on a table physically and you know, passing the buck actually, yeah. passing the word. And then the mentors come in and they uh, have the final say of how the work was. And these were. no less mentors like amit choudhury and ramesh gona sikra yeah. so that was a different kind of it it was a 10 day as you know so that was different uh, and of course it really really i think i met some friends that stayed with me for life okay oh, like you I, being I, one I, of them yeah, yeah <laughs> and nash agree. yeah yeah nash recently uh, invited me to the asian book club you know we were discussing bombay hangar was there so i think these friends stayed you never know na you can just luck out with something like yeah. true so, that was there but uh, the iowa residency and the charles was wallace were three month uh, duration mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. residencies and they were different so the iowa was uh, uh, was uh, like you know uh, very plural in the sense it had 35 other writers and poets coming from different corners of the world and uh, it all seemed like a fil- like a festival a literature festival every night in the common room because we stayed in iowa house hotel no matter what you did in the day you may have gone to universities uh, read or you may have attended other lectures when you came to the common room where you had you kind of socialized with toast and wine perhaps we all read you know informally from our works and right. that was like a festival like a like the whole world confluencing in one place mm-hmm. you also gleaned a lot because when you read literature or hear literature contemporary literature from different parts of the world i think uh, there can be no better uh, accelerated process of understanding the world because you're not listening to world news or world affairs but to poetry mm. you know so which which crosses so deep into the psyche of uh, the culture around you uh, so uh, that was different uh, in 3 months those 3 months were completely different because it was very plural charles wallace however is a solo residency you are the only fellow who goes there in one term okay so there's no one else there you might be associated with uh, the department of english Mm-hmm. and uh, you are a solo fellow there so it's very uh, it has all all solitude so both these residencies have a different window view you have the iowa river and you're writing people would be writing and then they would be socializing in the night whereas in the solo residency you are on a party with yourself so i feel both kinds of residencies bring out different things inside you because finally what does a retreat or a residency do or supposed to do it is supposed mm-hmm. to help you uh Uh, dive deep into yourself find your inner voice your inner music mm. basically it is to tune out the noise outside make you go deep down and make you uh, i don't know find yourself excavate what you want, what you are what you want to write basically it's a kind of a meditation yeah. you know so i can say that i found a lot of myself in sterling because i was in abject solitude in fact that was a lock- that was a beautiful lockdown before the lockdown of the world Okay. So, after that, you were like, "No, I don't want any more lockdowns. What are these COVID lockdowns?" That was a lockdown of a solitudinous nature, and um, I definitely uh, plunged deep into uh, thinking of the themes I want to write and all. See, that solitude will always benefit a thinker or a dreamer, and this doesn't have to be. Now, coming back to it, uh, applications to residencies uh, are very, very uh, lottery-like because there are so many people who apply. every year and uh, so many people who write well right okay. so how does so if you don't get selected doesn't mean you're not a good writer okay because there are too many people so they search for a unique voice definitely uh, and how do you build a unique voice is how close you get to words and how often you write and uh, 
you know your own voice is your own words that you use you yeah, to say something uh, it's not generic but uh, it it is developed over a period of time in fact you know just recently i realized there are three kinds of voices there is a voice which is the writer's voice there is a voice which is a world view voice and there is a when you're writing a novel there's a something called the novel's voice and i thought the novel's voice is the author's voice it's not the novel's voice <laughs> is the rhythm of the novel the beast that in itself what it is so i was like oh my god these are like multi voices so basically it's like a unique voice that they look at and uh, in charles wallace people told me that uh, i was my writing samples were unanimously uh, like you know selected as in to say there are three judges so they usually in many years would have to con uh, contest ki they like this this participant over that participant but in the year that i went they said we unanimously we like we, we didn't have any debate <laughs> i was like oh wow, that's that's a big compliment but having said that if you don't get into residencies don't uh, let that define you as a writer or a poet because uh, mm -hmm. not all are going to get the lottery all the time all the time and it's very dicey even i didn't know i would be getting iowa or charles wallace uh, so it definitely uh, you know instills unprecedented levels of confidence in you as a as a writer because you get externally validated from big places mm -hmm. so that definitely helps but you have to still come back to earth and do your work you still have to research you still have to rewrite that novel you still have to go through the you know fine sieving of the, every sentence no one is going to do that for you so you come back but definitely you come back with more conviction but having said that i realized also that festivals residencies they don't define you as a writer or a poet because a poet or a writer makes festivals it's not the other way around yeah. so uh, if you keep um, as a mainstay uh, you know your self belief with you keep everything inside keep the controls inside because you know the external factors can be good sometimes they may not be favorable so you cannot be defined by them or you shouldn't be defined by them yeah but having said that all the best there are a lot more residencies that are coming out in the world now yeah. uh, and uh, yeah people are applying people are applying all the time and uh, wish you luck because keep those 15 pages uh, of you know writing the best that you can keep it in the widest range that you can when i had submitted to iowa i had a bit of poetry a bit of haibun one short story so i gave a pur pura thali <laughs> those 15 pages were my thali the best of it so finally maybe we succumb to that <laughs> yeah uh, just to add here we have collated a list of all the possible scholarships and residencies that you can apply to uh, after the okay. session i'll share the link with you guys in the group in case any of you are interested to take it up yeah so okay. rochelle moving to our next question uh, how do you look at social media as a device for book marketing or author branding and are there any tips that you would like to share with us yeah, yeah. so uh, yeah so actually in my life currently i'm taking tips <laughs> but but because i was so bad with social media marketing yeah, but i, I remember one tip that you, know? you had given me where yeah. you had said that jo dikhta hai wo bikta hai so you know you have to just you <laughs> you are the first brand brand uh, you know pr person true, for true, your true, own true. work you have to start true, making true, the noise true, and that's true. when the world will start making yeah yeah noise. yeah 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 because because uh, you know how many hats we are donning like if we don't have an agent you are an agent if you don't you have a pr person and you can't afford a pr person yeah i mean it's very difficult to afford so you are your pr person so i think we are, we are 10 people no. Yeah. Yeah. not ravanas but 10 people so uh, so i'm starting to warm up to social media in the sense that of uh, trying to enjoy it i think you need to enjoy the promotion otherwise it becomes right. very distracting for a writer and, and you know i'm also an introvert so i don't like to be out there all the time uh, pushing things but now i started to enjoy it i started to in, enjoy the celebrate moment that okay this got published let's celebrate right. You know this uh, this new uh, news came out of an anthology. Let's celebrate it. Let's not think it's a distraction. But yes, because the news feed is so noisy these days, you you are not going to get discovered, or you'll get discovered like you know hundred years later. <laughs> so you'll have to do that little bit of uh, social media marketing. But I think I'm I'm a long way off. I'm just starting with Instagram and you know trying to understand the reels how many reels are there and what can i do see i have to enjoy it finally you know i'm not worried ki how many posts i put out i want to see that i enjoy those posts so even if two people like it it i hope i liked it while i was creating it you know otherwise it's gone 
yeah the likes can destroy you <laughs> yeah Uh, but but I'll, I'll, but to, but to say uh, to say one thing uh, i think it's also now a 360 degree kind of a surround sound uh, promotions because sometimes social marketing will do this much but your presence at a festival might do something else uh, then reading at some other place will do something uh, the, uh, one of the reasons i noticed is that diversifying into different forms allowed me a, a quite a little broad area like right. you know sometimes when i'm promoting my short stories people mm. know my poetry and that's why they buy that short story book so yeah. it becomes like a cross genre support so i feel sometimes a little bit of everything will get you that full again it's a thali again it's a thali yeah, yeah. so uh, roshan all your work has been published by various publishing houses you know which includes small presses independent publishing houses and now as you said your your recent short story collection was published by vishwakarma so how has your experience been with all of them and what tips would you like to give to writers who are querying right now or might be doing this soon once they are ready uh, yeah so i think uh, just go about it you're going to have uh, different publishers for poetry if you are looking at india if you are looking at international for poetry it will be very difficult because uh, not because they won't like your work uh, but because the price the pricing will be in dollars or in pounds and while while you convert it here your book price will be very high and so people will not afford it so you will have that to deal with um, but if you are like you know uh, asian american then it's a different uh, you can go in for american publishers uh, having said that for poetry uh, i think for short stories it's going to be a little different challenge because of the form and uh, if you have the theme that a big publisher needs you get it if you can have an agent well and good so basically i think if you concentrate on your craft and you get your get you know your craft right then i think everything else is going to be not so difficult get your get your manuscript in perfect order that's that's the weapon that's the biggest weapon you have because everything else is going to uh, like you know even if you get rejected there will be good rejections as in to say i get a lot of good rejections for my novels that uh, okay it is so many good things and then but one bad thing but i feel that's better than saying no <laughs> you know like a complete no so you know you need to improve a little bit here a little bit there but you're nearly there like you're just one one mile less yeah so i would suggest that, uh, that concentrate on your craft and uh, submissions also make submissions uh, not an emotional process make it an unemotional process because so that the rejections don't hurt you and it's a daily affair i feel sometimes before going to sleep i used to do it long time ago you know 15 minutes of submission before i am asleep <laughs> <laughs> so next morning i wouldn't remember ki maine ye kiya tha but ho gaya din ka din ka submission 15 minutes ho gaya yeah that's that's a very uh, nice way of uh, you know trying to keep a track of your writing we had damyanti last time uh, mm -hmm. for fdc and uh, she has a group of writers where they actually target 100 rejections in a year and they celebrate wow. those rejections wow. because wow. Uh, according to her what she said was those rejections means you are writing good or bad yes. is a secondary thing Yes. But hundred rejections yes, yes. means you are writing. Maybe yes. one of them might just click, but you yes. still wrote hundred things there, and that absolutely, absolutely. And in fact, there was a poet who said, "No, a shoe box of rejections." Yeah. So I think we don't have a shoe box now, but we have the inbox, and it teaches you a lot. I think rejections sometimes they are, they are not flat rejections or auto rejections. Sometimes yeah. an editor will spend some little time to say, "You know what? I just like this, but I didn't like the ending," and you get some idea. Or like those qualitative rejections which say that we liked. Uh, a b c but d and e didn't work so then you know where to look at so yes. you know you have to also credit those editors who give you that little bit of time in their busy schedule like and they'll yeah they'll reject but it teaches you a lot failures will teach you how to succeed very true very true yeah uh, so uh, prashant you've been writing across genres and have been published in all of them too so what would you advise a writer who wants to do this because publishing houses and PR firms usually don't advise us to, you know, mix so many things or so many genres and categories. Yeah. What has been your experience, and what would you advise it to someone who wants to do that? See, I, uh, I am like, uh, you know, very wild in that sense. I believe that go by your, uh, your creative instinct. I feel that right. your gut will never, your gut knows the future. Mm. Okay, no one knows the future. No industry pundit can really predict or extrapolate the future. they might right. say that this will happen in publishing that will happen in films but they really don't know your gut is not going to cheat you 
okay mm-hmm. your creative instinct so uh, like i know today that the hybun is now become a form that is publishable and books are selling but when i started uh, you know really uh, how do you say uh, promoting this form i even took it to the saint xavier's syllabus i didn't know what would happen to this form i thought it's going nowhere it's anonymous but uh, but i just felt very good with this form because i was a short story writer and a poet so i felt ki i love this form i just went ahead with that so this is not just for a new category of a new form it is for anything you believe ki this theme will work you like it go ahead yeah. and write it even though it's not it's going against the grain of the market tomorrow it might work so uh, so your gut feel should be there and baki ka dekh lenge yaar i don't believe that i should follow the market you know i i, I feel I, i always feel i'm not going to follow the market or the trends i'll follow my gut i'll follow my nose and i'll do whatever i want to do and uh, yeah. whatever themes i want to explore i'll go ahead and do that if i have a very good idea and you know people would say acha ye to abhi nahi chalega especially in screen play that happens mm-hmm. screen play they are like this is not the time for that a lot of uh, this genre has happened but i have this fascinating idea and it's really troubling me i'll go ahead and write it and i believe its time will come every idea has its has its time every story has its destiny it definitely comes absolutely i agree yeah. uh, and with this we come to an end uh, with my questions uh, i would like to open the floor for questions guys any questions anything sure. that you might want to ask rochelle please feel free yeah yeah anshuman please go ahead hi rochelle uh, hi uh, and i'm so thank you for this rochelle i was going through your bio just you know uh, updating myself about you you've written the screenplay which was uh, selected at the atlanta film festival Yes. Yeah, um, I just wanted to know how was the process from writing a short story and getting into screenplay writing. Uh, yes. How did you really, uh, you know, educate yourself? Uh, because you know, I think you you're an auto write act and uh, that has really worked for you. But even I'm in the process of you know getting into writing for uh, screen. So I find it very challenging, you know, because uh, mm-hmm. the grammar is very different, you know, because yes. in screenplay you have to be cryptic, you know, you can't get into details. Uh, you know visa we uh, short story writing or uh, you know any other format of writing so could you just hmm. uh, you know yeah so so uh, that journey anshuman this is such a like you know ek dukhti rag hai <laughs> like aapne dukhti rag pe you know you touched it because it is true uh, the short story has so much of prose and description so when you are trying to translate it verbally or visually translate to screen uh, i had a challenge uh, and gear shift you know i still almost feel like i had to i i used to physically think like when you're swimming under water and you're and you're swimming above water it felt exactly like that you're changing your valves it you're changing the verbal and visual um, descriptions but what happened is uh, i went through uh, when I, like so when i was writing prose i didn't have mentors but when i was moving to screen play it so happened i was actually conceptualizing a novel so i had a log lineish kind of a thing with me and uh, it so happened that i had i was like feeling this restlessness and i was in bombay uh, i went to uh, whistling woods for a five day course on screenplay just aise hi okay just aise hi because i was feeling restless so uh, i saw they had a hands on writing uh, screen writing course of six months at whistling woods now i thought on a fluke should i do it but what did i have i had only this novel germ which was a log lineish kind of a one paragraph so i thought chalo karke dekh lete hain and i do a lot of this and i think we all do that we just jump off the cliff we don't think much just jump so i just sent it and out of the 30 uh, you know uh, applicants that in that year they were selecting 12 of them so i was one of them uh, so my mentor like like this uh, this thing so i started from there i started from nowhere actually just with a paragraph which was actually supposed to be a novel and uh, it worked as an art film or an a kind of a you know like what i mean to say not a commercial kind of a thing more like a art film uh, so we started with that and for 6 months i was under this mentor his name is ashwini malik from whistling woods and um, ashwini sir took me through the not only the art and craft of screen writing because the story i had very well developed because i had the story in my head because i'm a short story writer so beginning to end what the characters want i i had this idea but i didn't know how to put it in the in the grammar or in the scenes so definitely i was reading a lot of screenplays but how much can you do in 6 months because it is a lot of rushed homework 
but he helped me out a lot by telling me you know like simple things that if a if the time changes you need to change it into a new scene you can't have it in the same scene you know because it, it uh, one scene captures one time point mm -hmm. so simple things i didn't know like that so i had a lot of difficulty in the in the beginning but uh, i read a lot of screenplays a lot of pdf screenplays and uh, learned from there then this went to nfdc it got selected at nfdc uh, screenwriters lab and there again the, there was a mentor from new zealand she took me through the process of both art and craft so while we spoke about the stories and the characters we also spoke about um, how, like you know the scene is not working its got description theek nahi hai like zyada hai you over it in it because i was still such a short story writer so i had to uh, uh, edit it out make it crisper so it was definitely swimming under water and above water for me it was like i had to shift the gears and it is difficult but it is uh, so once you get used to that switch then you 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 can do both you can do both right thank you so much thank you so much all the best thank you i like when i come across you know hybrid people because it reminds me of myself yeah thank you any any other questions i um i wanted to ask i had a hard time uh, you know talking about poetry and getting it published or even getting accepted so mm -hmm. i heard that you got an you have an agent so even i have the same agent suhail is my agent too mm -hmm. so i just thought i'd ask so even he said that you know go for a novel more than poetry mm -hmm. so how did you uh, i mean go ahead with your poetry and get it published and which are the publishing houses for poetry because apart from megha rao and uh, mm. you know rupi kaur i mm. think very few people have actually made it very big right right uh, so this is a very interesting question uh, see i didn't get uh, i didn't get my poetry published uh, as an agented through book pickers that i self agented because that's very difficult to get so you are your self agent uh, so i found copper coin uh, on my own i found uh, Uh, four degrees of separation. When I went to uh, Iowa and I came back, uh, the publisher himself said that he's interested in publishing because it became like you know you went there, so you you might be of of good quality. So I got it on a kind of a red carpet kind of invitation, and he said, "Okay, I'll pub I'll publish it in three months." And I was like, "Oh my God, this is a fairy tale." But uh, having said that, you besides self agenting your work, see that you have a lot of your work published in journals and magazines. and if you're getting rejected uh, your your name is ashisha right ashisha yeah, yeah so ashisha if you're getting too. rejected if you're getting rejected definitely uh, read you you should always read lot of good poetry and when you're getting rejected look at it from a critical eye or an objective eye if you can't uh, see if you can have groups of poets you know good poets in in that group who can critique your work maybe you need to improve on some small thing and you can't see it because we can never see it i think we we as we are evolving as writers we are very blind to what we are doing or not doing many times we we think okay this is good okay and then after a year you realize are there are these gaps i didn't see them at all so if you can't see those gaps even given an interval of say 6 months have other people critique them if you can i think uh, namrata this is also a critique circle it is right it yes, is yes. yeah yeah so have this uh, critique at this group or any other group that you like and uh, definitely keep uh, read a lot of good poetry international poetry that also helps you understand if you are not up to the mark with your craft where you need to invest and improve keep submitting uh, i think once you have a lot of your work submitted in journals it will be very easy to get self agented and published because publishers would have heard of you somebody would have seen you at a festival somebody would have uh, read uh, in, and and these publishers independent publishers like say poetry wala or copper coin or even the big five but mostly the smaller publishers they do read a lot of journals so they they if they come across your name they will know okay okay this is the person she wrote this oh she wrote that lovely poem i i would love to publish her because it's going to be a small market see eventually poetry is mostly done for passion in i don't think we get um, like we don't pay our ends with poetry so it's mostly you know a labor of love it comes under passion projects you know it's it's not going to have that money so therefore it won't have that agent generally 
it's because there's no commission and all that so 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 this is also going to be lifelong to invest in your craft and you know keep up keep uh, keep submitting study the rejections read read a lot i hope you're reading a lot of poetry. yeah I, i do i have an instagram poetry page but i mean it's okay. been uh, extinct for a year but yeah uh one yeah. more question when you said submit to journals i've not submitted to any journals yet so i guess that's new for me uh what yeah. kind of journals and where do we look for these journals for submission so if you just if you just uh, if you want indian journals you can uh, start with indian by just uh, if you google uh, search for the 50 top journals or 25 top journals you will find them okay. there will be a list yeah i i recently saw a list of two uh, kind of two lists which had lot of journals so you can submit to that and um, uh yeah submit to anthologies there are a lot of calls to submissions i, I hope you are on the call to submission pages okay Lots i'll check them out yeah yeah, yeah. all uh, the best we have collated a list of magazines so i've just shared that in the chat here if you want i can put it in the whatsapp group these literary magazines are all open for short stories essays book reviews poems so this is a good place to start for anyone who wants to start writing for any of the magazines the submission guidelines might have changed but we have hyperlinked them so please read the submission guidelines before sending into any of them i've shared it here i'll put it in the whatsapp group after the session is done uh roshan we have another question from neel for you uh hello roshan yeah, thank yeah. you for the talk uh, yes. the question is do agents help you bump up the line when it comes to getting your isbn number uh like uh i think isbn number is a very uh, kind of uh, how do you say na like a routine thing they'll get it for you they'll get it for you while they are uh, publishing your book that's uh, what you meant right no i think what he means is that there is usually a waiting for your isbn number so uh, uh, do uh, the uh, publishers actually bump up the queue uh, is that right neel am i no, getting fact, right in fact in fact yeah yeah it's right in fact they have a okay they have a bumper crop of isbn kept okay okay <laughs> so they don't even wait in the line they have already the isbn they'll they'll give it that's the least that's not what you need to worry about yeah you will get your isbn very quickly okay thank you so any more questions anybody else wants to share anything ask anything Okay, uh, Dr. Sapna Sharma wants to know, Rochelle, can we send our query to a foreign agent or a publisher? Definitely, but uh, definitely, but uh, the how do you say the expectations and the professionalism required for the query letter and the submissions is ten notches higher than what it requires for the Indian publishers. Okay, okay? and I'm saying that through experience, <laughs> it's very tough to break through there because uh, English is their language, right? So they are into your query letter has to be impeccable 10 notches above uh, what you could do to an indian publisher i hope no indian publishers hearing me anyway. <laughs> i i hope that sorts your query sapna yeah thank you are there any questions anybody wants to share anything yeah any question with art craft anything is fine yeah i just want to add uh, this one experience uh, here roshan so we are actually trying to encourage them to buddy up with each other uh, so uh -huh. that you know when they are it, it helps in not only writing but also even critiquing as you said so uh, uh, i i and roshan met each other online i guess before the workshop and we uh, we are each other's beta critics and reading buddies or writing buddies so i have been a part of her poetry works or her manuscripts and it's vice versa so it sometimes happens like that that when you buddy up it need not just be a writing community you could also discover it in a workshop like because we were in that workshop together we had read each other's works we had critiqued that workshop you know required yeah. us to critique on each other's works and we were on the same page in terms of understanding of what writing style each, each of us has so that has maybe helped yeah. us critic our works or maybe understand the comments we give much better right now when we talk about our yeah. manuscripts and also uh, a lot of them have been budding up and one of them uh, ram ram is here i don't see shalini so ram and shalini had actually budded up this is the fifth yeah. session of this first draft club so they had budded up and they had written a nice post for us where they had shared their experience 
so we are trying mm-hmm. to say maybe in the same city if you're in the same city you could meet in person or you could you know connect with each other make a writing group which makes meet yes. monthly or something like that so that's what we are trying to do yes. Uh, yes. and it definitely but, helps it definitely yeah. helps i i was i was uh, a, you know with the writers group for of british council library mm-hmm. for and for 10 years few of us had moved on from that circle writer circle and we were critiquing each other's critiquing each other's works for so long 10 years almost and it helps it definitely helps yeah yeah mm-hmm. hey, ram you wanted to say something Uh, Chetan, are you here by any chance? Okay, I don't think he's here. Uh, any updates on the FBC front? Any questions? Any experiences that any of you wants to share with us? Yeah, anything that you would like to ask, even on theme related or uh, motivation to write. I mean, everyone is managing their their daily quota. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a very good question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sure. You know, I've been. Uh, struggling, in fact, uh, to write the other day. So you know, there's this stream of consciousness writing. So for five to ten minutes, you just write. So the other day, I started writing, and uh, it was such crap. Sorry, but you know, it was so bad writing. And I looked at it, and I said that uh, you know, I was consumed with this self doubt that you know, what am I doing? You know, and uh, perhaps you know. So it was one of those dark moments where. you look at your work nothing is coming you've read so much and then you know there's this instantly you go down into a rabbit hole and that's what happened yeah. to me you know and it's right. difficult right. to pull yourself out of it you know because it's such a solitary yeah. uh, journey that uh, true. Uh, you know in my true. but how did how did you pull it, how did you pull yourself out then because there are many coping mechanisms I, that writers use but i wrote again the next day and uh, it was somewhat better than yesterday So there was yeah. some. So you relieved yourself. You know, I salvaged myself. <laughs> you know, there was some redemption there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. I also wanted to ask you, how much do you think before you write? Like the incubation time. Um. See, I sometimes, you know, what I've been doing is that I get a. So my dreams are very lucid and vivid. Okay. So uh, I get a thought in my dream, and then using that as a premise, I start writing. and uh, also i borrow a lot from uh, just plain observation so then okay. you know i look at someone and then i feel that okay this is a character that could probably uh, be in a uh, in a situation and then i you know sort of add layers to that character so that's okay. how i get into the process of of writing but okay. it's just okay. you know just random ideas and uh, yeah. and most because of them I, are sent because i'm by, from me. yeah i don't know why okay i find that strange. very interesting No, but that's very interesting because the subconscious mind is as active and rich. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me, I don't get dreams, but I do if I work a lot. You know, like bang the theme in my conscious mind through the day, then my subconscious mind will definitely give me that one little epiphany. Mm. You know, something. But I never get dreams. But this is, uh, you know, why I speak of the incubation time because sometimes, especially in stories, more than poetry. Poetry, you don't need incubation because the inspiration of the first line is enough to start. and you will reach the end of the poem but when stories are concerned i notice that there is a time when a ripe time when you start writing and there is a raw time when you shouldn't write you should let it simmer let it brew when it's ready to overspill that's when you write because you catch it at its wholeness so i, I notice that incubation times matter a lot hmm. yeah. Yeah. you know an- another thing rochelle uh, so i have written a short story and uh, i mean it's it's gone for publishing uh now mm-hmm. there's this guy uh, he's a producer he's asked me to change mm-hmm. it into a uh, a story bible uh give me okay. a, a, i have to give him a, a pilot uh, the pilot wow. episodic outline and a right. log line right so i've mm-hmm. been you mm-hmm. know listening to a lot of uh, robert mckee yeah. and uh, uh, you know aaron sokin and you know there's baman irani's masterclass and i've been yes. reading a lot you know there is this uh, story dialogue and character by robert mckee then there is uh, you know right. the, the cat yeah. one how to write a screen you know the yes. seven uh, the yeah save the cat yeah save the cat yeah. yeah however i find it very challenging to put that you know like the format you know when you have something in a short story oh. Oh. and uh, so oh. the character oh. sketches so i was looking at mayor of each town uh, oh. oh. uh, pilot script and the, the whole script. script yeah yeah okay, yeah. okay. okay. so in yeah. so so mayor has been described in one or two lines okay and that's it mm. however uh, mm. 
when you look at the story bible then it has to be very detailed right or how does it right. work right. Uh, so no, I'm, see I'm, what what you do is yeah what you do is uh, you uh, download some uh, uh, bibles and uh, bibles also you get you know not yeah. just the episode outlines yeah. not that the pilot episode outlines even the bibles that you get study the bibles of at least 20 uh, 20 uh, web series web shows okay 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 and you will be able to place yours okay understood because every bible every bible also differs when i was studying bibles uh, yeah. i noticed that sometimes the character sketch is just one paragraph sometimes yes. it is one page with mm. a, a sample character maybe mm. it's an actor or it's somebody and it's there's a photo of that person so ev- everything will change a little bit now you decide whether you want a uh, one page bio data of the character or uh, one paragraph is enough mm. hai na so you you study at least 20 uh, pilots or okay. bibles okay and then you will find your you will find where you want to write or place your your story right okay but definitely there's a switching of gears because i know this as a short story writer you know you you have to break that mold of the story itself mm. you have to completely break that story mold mm. so that you expand it from all venues and and write because if you're writing a web series of a short story imagine the number of characters that would increase yeah i have only four characters and, in the short and the story subplot. yeah and, and the subplot yeah 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 lot lot you have to break the whole mold break it up yeah it's very difficult huh? very difficult i'll i'll tell you yeah. what you do is uh, change the title of the short story don't go to the short story with the title again whatever okay. the title is go to untitled okay so break that barrier in your head that you're going back to a short story okay and then that's add good. characters add uh, sub plots because you're making a web series how many seasons it's a limited series limited okay thank god for that <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 no i wanted it like all that the yeah. Best. Yeah. yeah yeah thank you so much okay all thank the best you. with it ram you had a question you had raised your hand uh, yeah yeah so two things one is on anshuman's observation that uh, he read he wrote something he didn't like it and he went into state of despondency so my writing teacher he tells me that uh, if you don't get into that despondency it means you are not doing something right because not everything that yeah. you write can be good uh, so what works for me uh, from experience is that i know there is something that i have written that is good i go back read it so i know that okay i have it in me so that's uh, what i do just an observation the second thing arushal i have a question for you so poetry is a very personal thing right because it resonates to different people in different manners like for some people instagram poetry might resonate for somebody who truck ke bumper ke piche ka slogan might resonate to somebody or uh, whereas for somebody like me who's read a lot of regional languages of poetry the classical form uh, appeals a lot so so how do you like you know find an audience because today when i read a lot of contemporary poetry i just feel that it's some clever sentences broken up into different lines i mean that's my personal view mm-hmm. uh, so right. so how does one go about approaching poetry in 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 that environment right i mean i uh, the in uh, in uh, biden's uh, acceptance speech the poetry that was read i thought it was just a whole lot of theatrics which no substance i mean that's my personal opinion <laughs> right it, it made for excellent theatrics okay. yes uh, so right. so how does right. one approach poetry in a scenario like that See, i like your comments very much okay because you're already very critical about poetry so that means you're a very good reader okay you're a very good reader i i have not read your poetry so i have to still read it but you're a very good reader you have a critical analysis so i feel uh, poetry whether it has an embellishment of language like mm-hmm. what you say these clever sentences and this language or whether it is simple mm-hmm. it has to finally do what poetry does move us in some way disturb us in some way finally right, right? that i agree. because yes. i think it i think poetry is about memory for me at least mm-hmm. we may all differ with how we look at poetry for me it's memory either it's a, it's a forgettable poem that it just goes by okay or it is like a person i remember this person i remember this poem so it sticks so for me poet, poetry is about memory sometimes i remember a haiku more than i remembered an epic poem mm. of 100 pages right. so why did i remember that haiku there was something unique about it that just sticks right. so having said that i feel uh, ram whatever poem you you write whether it's with a, if you don't like the embellishment of language well and good if you write like simple uh, simple sense simple words well and good but finally the craft the craft and the rhythm is what stays right okay that okay. that is what you need to concentrate on getting right. uh, uh, i think you have to be self critical when you when you are 
editing it after a time interval. That's, take out that extra okay. word. Take mm. out that uh, extra line. Don't uh, fear. Keep it. I think that the more and more pruning you do, like a gardener, the better for your poem. The, the smaller the poem, the sharper it is. That is true. Yeah, it's more difficult. Yeah. Exactly, and that is very difficult because that's like sharpening the nib yeah. of, a, of a pen. You know, so. Yeah. I think that is it, and if then your poem will be like a dagger; it will go through, okay. and it, you don't have to worry about uh, you know the overload of some people. They have bought thazaris, you know, so thazaris dot in. Khareed liya hai, to use karte hai. So it's okay, but every I I must say this poetry is like the forest bird song. Every bird singing will be appreciated. That's very helpful. So thank yeah. you, thank you very much for that yeah. because I think I have written maybe about four hundred or five hundred poems, and I haven't put them out simply because I was not very sure. No, no, no. Please put them out and also put them out in a way that uh, people can critically comment, people okay. can appreciate it, right. uh, be open to it. You will also grow as a in your voice. Right. Yeah. Okay. All the best. Thank you very much. So, like, uh, AK Ramanujan send me some said, of the poems. I'll do that. <laughs> yeah. I will take yeah. your contact from uh, uh, number one. So, like, AK Ram, I'll just say two more two sentences. Uh, AK Ramanujan he said that a poetry when you read it, it should ring a bell in your head. So I think that mm -hmm. resonates a lot with yep. what you said. Yes. And Absolutely. I go back to Kalidasa. And I think Kumar Sambhavam, he started with Vag Artha It Veva Samprakta, which means Vak and Artha, that is the music or the rhythm and the meaning. Mm -hmm. Both have to come yeah. together in poetry. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. And that is that is the tight rope walk. That's yeah. very difficult to do. I will agree with you that I don't uh, resonate with a lot of poetry that I read, contemporary poetry. Right. And I do resonate with a lot. It, it is just like, you know, a heap of, a, a mixed bag of things. Right. Like, yeah. But then I also think that that is the same that happens with movies, with other things, right? We like some, we don't like some. That's right. That's how it always works. Right. Yeah. So, so thank you very much. I mean, I want to talk a lot, but I don't want to monopolize. So thank you very much. I mean, no, no, no. All the best. Number. Thank you so all, much. All, yes, Thanks. all the best. Yeah. So we come to I the last Vishaka, question. No, yeah, Vishaka, uh, Vishaka. Vishaka. We'll take our last question. Yeah. Hi, hi, Namrata. Hi, Rochelle, and thank you for this uh, wonderful session. I think what I'm, what I, what is, what, what's uh, definitely going to stay back with me is what you said about your gut knows the future. So it's so very powerful. Sometimes um, we restrict ourselves from writing something because you know thinking that it doesn't fit in any genre. Uh, so that was lovely. And uh, uh, in fact, I just wanted to share my FDC journey this time. So I've been participating in the last few months, but somehow uh, you know daily writing couldn't happen. But this time around, it's 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 been so nice. I've I had set a very small target, but I've been able to write almost daily and it feels so good. It's just like oh, cleaning yeah. that pipe uh, yeah. by, uh, you yeah. know, uh, that pressure. I just, I just had one question, ki, you know, I, I do write poetry sometimes. So, uh, but how does one edit poetry? I mean, you know, there was one pointer about, you know, how you make it sharper, uh, you know, in terms of, but how does one go about editing poetry? Because, uh, Personally, for me, like it's just you know something uh, you get inspired by something which is happening in your daily right. life, and you just uh, it just kind of flows. And then, um, what's the process? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but first, first and foremost, uh, congratulations on that sense of accomplishment that comes from writing what you set out to write. That is very important. I think uh, as writers, now uh, our conviction is built by many things, but one of the conviction that is built is uh, the inside job of how you uh, treat your writing. Or how do you treat yourself as a writer? So if you can do smaller work, but you do that and you have a sense of accomplishment, that's very important. So good to hear that, good to hear that. Uh, about the poem, yes, uh, poetry, when we write, we write naturally and we feel what more can be done. But uh, allow yourself to keep that draft away and believe in the evolution that you have as a person. So when you come back to the piece, say after, now I don't have a, prescribed interval time because it differs. So I can only talk of my interval time. You see if it works for you and it works for anyone else. I usually come back when the poem calls out to me. So supposing I write a raw poem or a raw short story, I keep it away in draft one. It's forgivable, okay, that draft because I have written everything in it. Things that I've overwritten, I have digressed, I have done whatever I have to do. I've been mad. I keep it away. I go to something else, I do other things. When I feel, you know, that poem or that short story is calling out to me, now that could be 15 days later, it could be three months later. I go back, I have, I am a new person. Okay, that same piece is a new piece. Now we both are new, we both have evolved. Now when I go, I can see glaringly what is missing or what is too much. Yeah, and then you become the editor and you start chiseling out 
mostly are chiseling out very rarely do i come across writers who say we wrote less we underwrote because poetry you, if you underwrite you can't uh, fill it up short stories you can do that ki are ek you know ek uh, plot reh gaya to i'll fill it up you can't do that for poetry so what you do in the first draft that is your main main stay you will start chiseling only after that so basically mine is overwriting i go back and i re- reduce a lot of lines words and i prune it to its sharpness it's like weighing gold you know when you when in my uh, haiku workshops i teach that um, haiku when you write because it has such few words it's like a goldsmith weighing gold ek word zyada nahi and ek syllable zyada nahi in that word okay because a rhythm rhythm chhut jayega there is a rhythm in poetry and wo rhythm uh, you have to evoke the singer in you the musician in you so you know when the rhythm is going off it might just be that one word one article yeah uh, so uh, when you come back to it after that interval and you edit it once if you feel okay now i think this is the poem and if you feel no i you will know it automatically you will feel ki no there's something still missing i don't want to submit it yet i think i'll go through another round keep it aside come back second time and work on it again you edit it line break it even check the line breaks sometimes i feel simple things you put a line to the to the left indented if you put those two lines to the right indented it changes the meaning of the poem the same two lines so you're playing with space one word up or one word down changes something in the on the page so you have to have that you know that play with the mosaic of the poem and when you feel okay now i think it's it's enough then you send it and of course i i'm assuming here uh, vishaka that you are continuously reading because when you read poetry somehow it it becomes you know so second nature whatever you are working in if you are work, writing novels read a lot of novels or keep reading a little bit of here a little bit of there when i was doing screenplays i'm reading a lot of screenplays some five scenes every night you know and just thinking how did this structure happen so when you're doing poetry read a lot of international poetry one of the best places is poetry foundation because you will get international uh, poetry and all the top uh, international magazines there are 50 of them or 100 of them have good poetry but then you will even find good poetry in the in uh, himalayan writing retreats uh, list what was made from there also you read keep reading so then you will immediately know ki this is less this is more and then you become your own poetry editor yeah that's wonderful thank you so much yeah. all the best for this that brings us to end of this session uh bishaka i would encourage you if you are keen uh, you can always attend one of the workshops that uh, rochelle leads the poetry workshops she takes us through haiku haibun which includes editing critiquing and uh, because it's a very closed workshop it actually has just 10 to 12 participants so the feedback is one on one there is lot of conversation as always is the case with himalayan writing workshops we are scheduling one for this weekend and we have some slots available you can definitely let us know yeah thank you so much rochelle and thank you everyone thank for joining you. us i, I see chetan is back time. yes chetan you wanted to oh, add yeah. something yeah yeah thank you so much thank you everyone for being here we'll see you all next week we are having thank penguin thank you and all the best yeah thank yeah, you yeah. we are having the uh, editor of penguin uh, random house shreya punch uh, next sunday joining us for a session so we shall meet next sunday at 5 pm then yeah thank you so much thanks rochelle bye bye thank you very much all the best all thanks. the best